now we're done with um an exercise on just a review of what the definition of using the definition of Rick in, in solving problems. Now let's go to um the relationship of Rick and kinetic energy. Okay, so let's go to Rick and kinetic energy. So Rick and change in speed. So can it talk? Rick is related to the change in speed of an object. So back it. So if an object is moving, then it is capable of moving Rick. So for example, if um a a box here is moving with some velocity b, and you applied some force on that object. Ano may expect mo? Siempre magbabago yung kanyang um, acceleration, right? And since there's an acceleration, now the velocity of that object will start to change, di ba? Magbabago rin yan. So, for example, um, if the force is applied on parallel to um, the direction of motion of the object, what will what we expect is that that object will accelerate, and hence. Um, uh, bibilis yung object. So there will be a change in the speed of the object. Now, on the other hand, if you apply it anti-parallel to the direction of the velocity, what will happen? It will, it, will, it will slow down. Therefore, there's still change in the speed of the object. So parang ganyan yung mangyayari. So the force vector, um, N and W, we have get, um, um, if S here denotes the displacement of the vector, um, displacement, uh, what displacement of the box. So what will happen is it will, the box will slow down. So magde-decelerate na yun yung object because you remember your force is parallel to your acceleration and hence A and B will be anti-parallel. Ang mangyayari ay mm, um, mag-slow down yung object. Now, if a force is applied perpendicular to the direction of the velocity, what do we expect? Ano lang mangyayari? May mangyayari ba sa velocity ng object? Magbabago ba yung velocity ng object? Depende. Kasi, for example, for example, if this force here, kung walang, walang surface dito, ano mangyayari sa object? Siyempre, babagsak yan, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Of course, on the other hand, the normal force will counteract the exerted weight plus um, that applied force, and therefore, walang mangyayari dyan. Mangyayari lang is gagalaw pa rin yung, yung object with the same speed. Okay? So in that case, um, if there, in general, this will change in velocity, but the speed itself, it will not change. Bakit? Kasi nagbabago lang yung direction ng object. Pero dito, in this particular case, hindi. Kasi, for example, here, pero kung surface dyan, the normal force will adjust to the direction or to the magnitude of the weight and the applied force. So, so kapag gumawa ka ng free body diagram, yung weight at saka force ito, mag-adjust yung normal force dyan. Therefore, hindi babagsak or aangat yung object. <laughs> diba? Gets ba? Gets? Yes. Nakuha? Okay, I hope you get it. Huh? Sige. Now, Work in kinetic energy. Now let's assume. Okay, this is a, a very rough, um, a very rough derivation. I will derive something today. So um, let's say for instance, um, a, a box starts moving from point x one to x two, and the displacement of that box is x because of some net force f. And we will assume for the meantime, uh, at least in this derivation, that the force and the displacement are parallel to each other. Para madali. <laughs> Kasi kung diyan parallel to each other, uh, medyo may complications sa mga yat. So for the meantime, let us consider first the parallel component of the force, which is again the magnitude of force because parallel sila um, to the displacement. So ang tanong ngayon, how does the applied force and the resulting displacement S relate to the change in speed V1 to V2 of the object? So remember, okay, recall. We are assuming that the force here is constant. Therefore, if there are no forces acting which is parallel to the direction of the displacement, kung yan lang naman yung nag-a, ano yung in-expect kong acceleration dyan? What do you expect about the acceleration? Ano lang yung magiging acceleration niya? Ano lang? Zero. May acceleration, may force kay. <laughs> diba? Ano yung relationship ni acceleration kay force? So, yun doon second law, diba? So, this is just F over M, tama? Tama? Tama, di ba? Yes, sir. Okay. Huwag <laughs> kalimutan. <laughs> Oy, guys, LE1 ngayon. <laughs> Nasa LE1 coverage to. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. Recall that since F is, uh, F is constant here, A is also constant. So, ano pwede mong gamitin kung constant acceleration? Ano pwede mong gamitin dyan? Ano yung pwede mong gamitin to define the positions, velocities of an object kapag constant acceleration? Anong, anong formula yung pwede mong gamitin? Your velocity time function. Pwede ka mag-velocity time, velocity position, or position time. Anong tawag sa mga yan? Kinematic. Your kinematic equations, right? So recall your kinematic equations. So, pero ba't ka naging kinematic equations? Sandali, meron kasing point yan. So kinematic equations. So, ang mangyayari, 
Note, walang time jan. Remember, again, as I said before, the force is dependent on the position, not necessarily dependent on time. So, uh, in that case, the acceleration is also not dependent on time. Um, so, ang pag-usapan natin is yung velocity position. So, uh, remember, so, if the velocity, or uh, in that case, the speed of the object here is V2, and the speed of the velocity of the object is V1 initially, then what is the relationship between V1 and V2? We know that V2 squared equals V1 squared plus 2A quantity X2 minus X1. Tama? Tama? Yes. Tama, di ba? Now, from this definition here, X1 and X2, ano yan? Na? Ano yung X2 minus X1? Na? Ano yung X2 over minus X1? Displacement. The displacement S, di ba? So I can write this as V1 squared plus 2A S. Tama? Now, again, the acceleration is dependent on the force. So, so I can write this as V2 squared minus V1 squared equals 2 quantity F over M quantity S. So, tama? Tama? Yes. Now, I can multiply these both sides by M over T. And then I get something like a 1 half M V2 squared minus 1 half M V1 squared equals cancel to, cancel to. Ay, sorry, hindi magka-cancel yung F. Um, cancel yan, cancel yung M. I get an FS. But what is FS? But what is FS? Work. That's the total work, di ba? So this is W. Therefore, eh, pero ano to? Let us define this as the kinetic energy. Okay. Then, ano na derive to? This is the final kinetic energy, right? This is the initial kinetic energy. And therefore, the work is just equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system. Tama? Next? Yes. That's what's known as your work kinetic energy theorem. Nakuha? Nakuha? Yes. Okay, yes, so let's define again. Just a recap. Let's define the kinetic energy as the energy associated with motion, which is given by your one of mv squared. Alam niyo na yan. Uh, and then we def we, from the derivation in the previous slide, we have discussed or we have defined the work kinetic energy theorem, which is given by the work is just equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system, which is k2 minus k1. Okay, importante dito that it will only act. This is true, in general true. So pala, I like to emphasize this. So, for a single particle. I will go back to this definition when we go to energy. That will be next time. Bukas yun. Again, this is in general true for a single particle. Kapag systems of particles are yan, medyo nagkakaroon ng konting change. Medyo kailangan mong baguhin ng konting konti. Yung definition na yun. I'll explain to you why next time. Okay. Now, now, for a single particle, the work is gives you the change in kinetic energy of the system. So, ang maganda rito, um, remember, kinetic energy, these are all scalar. So, pwede kang mag-solve ng problems without actually um, having differences, for example, in finding the forces. So, may ayaw nga natin nudrog ng free body diagram, di ba? So, mas okay minsan na gumamit ang energies. Dito na natin nakikita yung difference ng energy approach at saka ng um, force approach, which are forces are vectors, but energies are scalars. And makikita mo dito, K2 minus K1, mas mapapadali nung sa yung buhay natin. Okay? Questions? Questions? May tanong ba rito? None so far. Ah, okay. 